What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You're watching the Rage and Rona review. I got a review for you. Last weekend, I decided to pull up my 2012 Blu-ray and watch it. Well, here's my review. 2012 came out in 2009. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it came out three years before the actual event. The actual event takes place in December 21st, 2012. Now, if you guys don't know what the date or rather the title is referring to, it's referring to the end of the Mayan calendar. The Mayans believe that on the exact date of December 21st, 2012, there's supposed to be a global ca cataclysmic event simply because their calendar, the Mayan calendar, actually ends. It doesn't go beyond December 21st, 2012. There's just nothing after that. There's no December 22nd or anything after that. And because of that, it suggests that the world ends. All right. And I'm reviewing this in 2014, uh, and uh, it sounds kind of weird, but we survived in real life, which suggests that this movie could not have come out after December 21st, 2012, all right? But anyways, uh, I guess that's part of the whole marketing thing about the movie. It needs to come out before the, the events to build up hype around the movie. Anyways, uh, this movie is directed by Roland Emmerich, who's the king of disaster films. He directed disaster films like The Day After Tomorrow, Independence Day and also Godzilla if you count that as a disaster film. There's definitely a lot of disaster going on and as a film it is quite a disaster. He's also directed films or non-disaster films like The Patriot and White House Down but he's most known for his disaster films. This movie is starring John Cusack, Amanda Peet, Chiwetel Ejiofor, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Tandy Newton, and Woody Harrelson and Danny Glover as the American president. And what this really is about, and really all you have to know, is that this film is all about disasters. This is the king of disaster movies. This is the disaster film, the ultimate disaster film, mainly because they wanted to make 2012 the ultimate global disaster event and to put, and put that on film. <laughs> and when you're making a film, about 2012, you have to ask yourself, as a filmmaker, what are some of the great disaster films from before? So we gotta, we gotta, um, we gotta uh, take those elements, those those elements from those great disaster films, and bring them into our movie, and just mash it up, and then make one single film. And that's what it really is, because you get elements from a Titanic, Independence Day, Day After Tomorrow, uh, The Towering Inferno, uh, uh, what else is there? There's, there's just a lot of disaster films and he pretty much put it all into one film and he just uh, mashed it up, blended it up and made it, made it into like all those films but 10 times crazier and on steroids. That's what it is because all the movie is when you're watching all this disaster takes place is that it is outrunning out driving, out swimming, out flying, and basically out everything in disasters. You're out running disasters, you're out driving them, you're out swimming them, and you're out flying them. <laughs> and it's just repeat that after, re uh, repeat, just keep on repeating that cycle, all right? And that's what you should be going into this film for, okay? It's not about, uh, you know, great acting or a great story. It's got the simplest story ever, but one thing that makes this movie uh, a, a kind of unique is uh, is that they they um, they decide to connect all these characters, or rather, have all these characters connected in some way. There are actually lots of characters in this film. After all, it is a global event, so there will be characters from uh, different backgrounds, and they're all connected in some sort of way. And I actually like that about the writing of this film because they they, they it kind of added that um. Uh, I guess uh, that Independence Day thing, you know how Jeff Goldblum and, and, and Bill Pullman and Will Smith, they're all, they all have different backgrounds, but somehow they come together. And so, so that is what uh, 2012 is like. They take that exact same formula, but they expand it on a more global level. All right, and uh, they connect everybody, and I like that about the the the, the story. It, it really makes it a little bit more accessible because there is that human story, there is that human connection. It isn't just about things exploding, blowing up, and tidal waves and destruction. It isn't always about that, but it is about that for the audience because that's what really makes this film such a fun roller coaster ride. Like I said before, this is the king 
of disaster movies. Now, this movie was made back in 2009, and I was always telling myself that had this movie been given the, the 3D treatment, like a post-conversion treatment, it would have been awesome. Like, it doesn't need to be filmed in 3D because everything is just all done digitally. It's all visual effects. If they gave it a 3D post-conversion as good as the ones they do now, it would have been a way awesome, way more awesome experience. I saw this movie in the theater, and I felt like it was such an amazing ride. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. Now, most of the fun, in fact, all of the fun happens in the first and second third act of the film. I feel that it, it's a very fast progression to the disasters. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to get there, but once it gets there, it's a lot of fun. But once we get to the third act of the film, it's all about where they build the human connections and the interactions and the emotions. And while that serves, the sto serves a purpose for the story, it, once you you know you got treated to some amazing spectacular like disaster sequences and then the third act is just doesn't live up to the first and second act so i feel that the third act it it doesn't quite fall apart per se but it just leaves a little bit more to be desired so um it's kind of like a modern day noah's ark film all right and in fact it's kind of structured like the movie Noah. <laughs> and uh, pretty much there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. I'm going to give this movie a, uh, I'm going to give it a, a 7 out of 10. Uh, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. It's, it's, it's got some really silly moments. Uh, there's some moments which are really cliche, like you think somebody's dead or actually the, the filmmakers make you believe or try to make you believe that somebody's dead, but then boom, they're alive. They make it out alive and you're like, oh, <laughs> you, there's a lot of scenes like that and it just gets a very very silly but you just got to check your brain at the door and just enjoy this ride I had a great time it's the ultimate disaster flick and you definitely should check it out uh, with a big screen and a big sound uh, system if you have that all right seven out of ten that's all I got to say in this video as always if you enjoyed this review hit the like button subscribe to the YouTube channel like me on Facebook the Raging Nation also follow me on Twitter at Raging Nation my name is Alexi thanks for watching I'll see you next time peace and just how everything plays out I think it's just a, a, a better film uh, but that's my opinion so uh, where does Captain America soldier compare